how far would you go to get a hold of discontinued parts for your car? This time I bought an entire set of doors just for a tiny little piece of plastic. What's up guys, Shane here. Following up from the video I put out a couple of months ago talking about the 3D printer I got to make car parts. Of course, I've been using the 3D printer. I've printed off all kinds of stuff for the garage and all kinds of little parts, but I have not yet gotten around to making any parts for any of the cars, which was the reason I got the 3D printer in the first place. Fortunately, one of the parts that I need to recreate is a relatively simple part, at least as far as a design perspective. Um, it's not terribly complicated. It's not a big part. So, so like I said, this little trim piece that goes on the rear doors uh, of the S10 Blazer is a part that's been discontinued, um, I don't know how long, decades probably, uh, but I could not find this part anywhere. I couldn't find them used on eBay. So like I said at the beginning, I actually bought a complete set of rear doors off of somebody on Facebook Marketplace just to get the two little trim pieces, the one for each side. So I haven't put these on the car yet because I didn't want them to fall off and lose them because I wasn't gonna find them again. So I'm going to use these original used parts that I got to create a new one, basically. So the first thing I did was to use my digital caliper and get the rough dimensions of the part. Um, after that, taking a closer look at the part here, you can see that there are some basic shapes in here. And to design this, I use Tinkercad. So I'll go in here and show you. So since I use Tinkercad, the easiest way to recreate something is using simple shapes and adding them together, subtracting them to come up with the rough dimensions of the part that you want. I am by no means a CAD expert. In fact, I'm probably more of a CAD idiot. To start with, I just went ahead and real simply created a box um, with the length of the part. And that gave me a starting point. Then looking at the side profile of this piece, you can see here at the top, it is basically a trapezoid or at least half of a trapezoid for the bevel in that goes over the top of the trim. So on top of the box, I went ahead and added a trapezoid, set it on top, made it the same dimensions. So that is about halfway there just off of that. Flipping the part over here, you can see that the channel that goes over the upright piece of window trim is basically a trapezoid as well. So. For this, I went ahead on top of the box and the trapezoid for the base and took another trapezoid shape based off the dimensions for the original part here, flipped it to the side and put it on top of what I had created so far. From there, I went ahead and for this last little piece on the end, I went ahead and just made another real skinny little box that I attached and sat on top of the part. And from there, I've got a solid model that basically has the rough dimensions for what I want, but it's still a solid model. It's a lot wider. So from there, I went ahead and cut the 3D model in half, and that got me a little closer to matching the part here. Still too big, but getting closer. So from there, we need to remove and delete part of the model to make this thin enough to match the part that we're trying to create. So, so I went ahead and duplicated what I had, and then rather than making it a solid object and adding to my 3D model, I made it a hole or, or negative space. And then I put that up against the back side of my model, and then I grouped the objects, and then that took away all the material, or most of the material I needed to remove. Um, there's still a little bit in there that I needed to take away, so I just went in a little more closely and either duplicated and either duplicated my model and repeated that process or just went in there with small box shaped holes or whatever shape ne was needed to remove the excess material. So after that was done, I went ahead and took that part and 3D printed one. I think it actually came out pretty well. If you look at the side. It came out pretty well compared to the original part here. It's not exactly the same, but that doesn't really matter for something small like this.
Okay, so here's a comparison. Here's the original part on the top, and on the bottom is the one that I 3D printed. Here is where the part goes, so you can see roughly how that uh, fit on there. So there's the original, which on its own doesn't really even fit perfectly. It fits okay. Then here is the first attempt. So you can see here, it sticks out a little bit below the rest of the, uh, the rubber and the trim on the door here. It doesn't quite go back all the way at the top. So there's a couple little adjustments I need to make. Probably need to just, maybe even just delete this entire upright part on it here. And then uh, it looks like I might need to extend on the front end here, back a little bit so that it nestles in there. And then right here in the back, it looks like it could use a little more adjustment too. I could put it up, but then it still leaves a big gap right here. And then there's a gap here. So that would actually not look too bad if I just put it on the car, like, but I'm gonna work on refining it a little further and making some more adjustments and then printing another version. So let's go in there and make some adjustments. Okay, now that I've got a rough idea of how much of the first version of this I need to cut down, I'm going to go ahead in here to Tinkercad, back to the original design, which I went ahead and duplicated, so I um, left that Mark I, I guess we'll call it, um, alone, and then started a Mark II design here. Um, so for this one, I need to take approximately three millimeters out of the base of the part here and then also up here on the top this little extension uh, flat part I'm going to go ahead and remove that entirely because I don't think I really need it so those are going to be my first two changes so go ahead and take a whole box and slide it over the part that I want to take out all right so we'll group this together get rid of that so that looks pretty good. There's still a little piece there. That's pretty much a triangle, so I will use a triangle piece to remove that here in a minute. Next, to get rid of the base here, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make another box. Zero. Move my box over. Not big enough. Extend that. All right, remove that. Okay, so this is the last little thing I need to get rid of just to clean it up. Okay, so here's another tip for Tinkercad and basic use. Um, if you're having trouble getting something to fit within your part, your grid size might be a little too big. So if you drop that down, then a lot of times you can get in there a little closer um, than whatever it was letting you do before. All right, well, I'm just going to group that. I still don't think that's all of it. Let's try. Okay, so that looks a little better. Let's try that. There we go. All right. That's pretty close to what I want it to look like. One other thing I think I want to do here, too, is extend this top piece up just a little bit higher, maybe... I don't know, maybe a millimeter or two. So I think the easiest way to do that is going to be to duplicate this again. Now there's two of them. So I really just want the top right there, so I'm just going to make a hole and get rid of the whole bottom underneath it. take that and drag it over here to the original. And I just want to extend that up a little bit. So, Actually, I think I'm just going to make it a millimeter taller and leave it like that. Alright, I think that's it. Give that a shot. Yep, okay. I think there might still be a little bit of a uh, line there, but we'll see how it turns out when it prints. So, 
Okay, so I have a feeling this isn't going to be totally perfect yet, but I think this is good enough to go ahead and save and print another copy and then go test fit it on the car again and see how it fits. Okay, well here it is finished. Get it off there. Let's see. What are you... <clears throat> one of the other problems I noticed on one of the first versions that I printed was it's a little thin so um, I had one of the three that I printed crack right along here so hopefully this one doesn't do that but I am gonna have to go back and make the whole piece a little bit thicker on the next iteration here so let's get the supports off there and then Go test fit it. All right, here's version two. Get rid of that upright piece on the back here, so that's better. Extended the piece on the top, so that looks a little bit better too. I think I did take a little too much off the bottom, so I need to extend that back just a bit, and then maybe remove a little bit material then remove a little bit of material here on this side and actually right here I think I need to add a little bit to bring that up all the way to the edge of that so time for another revision all right so let's go in here and make those next round of adjustments open the file back up so like I saw out on the car it looks like I want to extend the front piece make it a little bit wider and on the back make it a little less wider. So go ahead and start with the box method again. I'm going to try to get rid of about two millimeters I think. It's pretty good. Go ahead and group that. All right, there they got rid of that. Now on the front, I want to add a bit. That looks pretty close there. Let's try grouping that. I think the only other thing, I want to extend this piece over a little further as well. Let's see if I can do that with a box too. Alright, so that's looking a little better. Let's double check everything. Okay, well, I don't feel like continuing to mess with that, so I'm going to take it from there and try to print a copy and see how it fits. All right, here we are back again. This was version three. I actually came out and tested this a minute ago, and I forgot to extend the bottom back a little further and to thicken this part up, so... I went ahead and did that. Here is the fourth iteration. And this fits pretty perfectly. You can see up here at the front, it fills in the gap. And at the back here where I took the material away, it now slides up against the rest of the window trim and sits flush. And then down here at the bottom, it's pretty close to uh, to where the rest of the trim is as well. So now I just need to flip this design so I can print one for the passenger side and then get these mounted on the car here and then uh, we'll see how they hold up after a couple months of being on the car and outside. Okay, so the final version is ready to mount to the car and what I'm gonna use to accomplish that is some Gorilla two-sided mounting tape. So this should hold up pretty well, uh, but 
we'll test it and see how it goes. First thing we need to do, of course, is to clean off the area. It's not gonna stick very well if it's dirty. So just using a little alcohol wipe to clean the area off. Make sure it's cleaned off real well. So just gonna use two pieces of the mounting tape. Since there's a low spot here, I'm gonna put a small piece of tape here and then a larger piece of mounting tape on top of it and then stick it on there. So I'm gonna take a third tiny piece and put it across the top here as well. All right, so that should do it. Looks pretty good. I already did the other side. If you want a set of these for your first generation S10 Blazer, just send me an email down below and I will gladly make and sell you a pair of these to install on your truck. If you want to get started with 3D printing yourself, check down below in the description of this video. I've got affiliate links if you want to order an Ender 3 like what I've got and start creating your own parts. But that's going to do it for this video. That's how you can start from nothing or from an existing part, recreate it or copy it and 3D print your own version. So make sure you like this video if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Thank you very much for watching till the end and I will see you next time.